Hello and welcome. This is a video presentation uh, in honor of the upcoming Yontif of Rosh Hashanah, and it's being sponsored by the Sachs family. It is in memory of Saul and Sarah Sachs, who passed away, both of them have passed away, uh, over 15 years ago. Normally, the Sachs family sponsors a memorial ELO program in preparation and anticipation of Rosh Hashanah. However, due to the situation that we have now with the coronavirus, it would be uh, difficult and too challenging to serve food as we normally have a Kiddush luncheon and a guest speaker who would present uh, two lectures. So instead, we're going to present uh, this video uh, in their memory. They were Holocaust survivors who were very appreciative of Jewish education because of the fact that their own education was interrupted by the Holocaust. And their children would always note that they would be especially proud to host an educational opportunity during Elul in anticipation of Rosh Hashanah. May God grant that their memory serve as a source of bracha and inspiration for their family and all of their friends. We are in the habit of ex extending a special greeting to fellow Jews in anticipation of the coming new year. And we would say, Lishana Tova, or we might say, Lishana Tova, may you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. But on the night of Rosh Hashanah, when we eat those special symbolic foods, there's a prayer there that is a little bit different. And there we ask that God make a new year for us. Shetachadash Olainu Shana Tova, a good year, and we add Umasuka, and a sweet one. What is there that is included in that nuance of saying not only Tova, but Masuka, not only good, but sweet? And I once heard from my maternal grandfather, Rabbi Riff of Blessed Memory, the following explanation. And he utilized a Gemara in Mesechta Brachos, where a Brisa quotes something in the name of the great Rabbi Rabbi Akiva, who said that a person should always accustom himself to saying that all that God does is for the good. It's interesting, in fact, that this is a halacha brought down uh, in Shulchan Aruch. And the Gemara illustrates this idea by a story that happened with Rabbi Akiva himself. He was once traveling, and he came to a community, and he wanted lodging for the night. And remarkably, no one in the town would extend any hospitality to the great Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Akiva took that in a way that God is doing something good for him. He didn't know at the time what it was, but he said, whatever God does, is for the good. He then, without any choice, went outside the city and thought he'd have to spend the night in a field. He had with him uh, the Gemara describes uh, a rooster, a donkey, and a lantern. A cat, the rooster, as Rashi explains, was utilized by Rabbi Akiva as what we might call an alarm clock. When it would crow before dawn, it would wake up Rabbi Akiva. And a cat came, attacked, and killed the rooster. He also lost his donkey because a lion came and killed the donkey. And subsequently, even the lantern that he had, a wind came and blew it out 
and evidently he wasn't able to relight it. The next day, he saw that an army had come into the community at night, the community that he had sought hospitality from. And as a result, he recognized that all that had transpired was really for the good. Had someone extended hospitality to him, he would have been taken captive as everyone else in the community was. If his rooster uh, would have crowed or his donkey brayed, then they would have uh, heard that noise and been able to recognize that there is somebody there. And so therefore, by virtue of the fact that he didn't have the rooster and they had lost his donkey, uh, they didn't notice him. And the light that he wanted to light uh, kept on blowing out, and so he had to sit in the darkness, and therefore he was not noticed. And by virtue of not being noticed, he was saved once again from being taken uh, into captivity. So the result was that it turned out to be a very good night for Rabbi Akiva. He was spared captivity because of all of these things that happened to him. They may not have initially seemed to be good events, but they turned out to be good events. But my grandfather said, it was a very good night, but you can't describe it as being a sweet night. Having to spend the night uh, out in the field, in the darkness, having lost his donkey and his rooster, it was not a sweet night. And that perhaps gives us an insight into what we mean by the prayer that we enunciate as we eat an apple dipped in honey. We want it to be a good year, but not just a good year, because everything that God does is for the good ultimately. We want it to be good and sweet. And that's why we add on to it Shona Tova Umesuka, a good but a sweet year as well. This has particular meaning as we are now in this era being dominated by the coronavirus. And during this, these past months, this past half a year, there's been many opportunities for people really to rise to greatness, to be able to uh, perform wonderful kind deeds for others, to be able to in fact make special efforts uh, to attend shul, uh, social distancing, and wearing a mask. And therefore, undoubtedly, God appreciates that behavior. However, I think we can all agree that the experience, as exalted as it might have been, as inspiring as it might have been in whatever good we did because of the challenging situation, it's not a sweet experience. And therefore, this is what we pray for. May it be a good year, the coming year. May it be a wonderful year, but also a sweet year as well. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu grant all of you a ksiva v'chasima tova. May all of your worthy prayers be accepted favorably for a shana tova umesuka, a good and a sweet year.